Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 6. I am your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Lisa Martin. We are joined by two guests for this segment. We have Alan Pell-Sharp, he is the founder of Deep Analysis. Welcome, Alan. Thank you. And Luke Palomara, VP AI Product Development at UiPath. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having us. So we're going to be talking about applying AI to the enterprise, and, and Alan, you literally wrote the book <laughs> on this topic, oh. Practical Artificial Intelligence and Enterprise Playbook. Why don't you start by giving our viewers the lay of the land and where you see the current state of the market in relation to AI, um, applied sure. AI? Uh, well, first of all, I wrote a book. <laughs> there are others. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, you know, AI, in a sense, isn't new. It's been around a long time. But the last few years, it's become just so much more accessible uh, and, frankly, a lot smarter than it was before. And so people are still sort of you know, thrashing around a little bit, trying to figure out what to do. I, I think, in very, very practical terms, there's still a world out there that thinks this is, this is for you know, people with advanced maths, data science, and actually it's not. It's incredibly accessible now. So we're in the early phases of figuring out what to do with it, and, and some of those things are very basic. Uh, you know, undertaking administrative tasks that were previously manual. It's not very exciting, but it saves a heck of a lot of money, and it saves a lot of headaches, right? So, hopefully in things like insurance, in healthcare, in customer service, just making life easier for everybody. There's many more complex and fantastic and amazing things, but those are the things in business that we're first encountering, and that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and you, you said that there, a lot of people are still reticent or, or skeptical, or they just haven't tinkered with it. As you said, we have this idea that it's for experts, for people who are good at this stuff. Yeah, and, and, and in truth, it, it is for experts. It's very complicated stuff, right? But, you, you know, just a few years ago, essentially you were building your own AI, and it's not the case anymore, right? You, you come to a company like UiPath or, or whoever, they've already built it for you. So, so there's that element to it. And I don't know if it's about skepticism. I think it's just, we don't know where to start. Um, this sounds clever, this sounds great, but where would we start with this in our organization? There is a secondary challenge that, you know, it's a cliche, but it's a truth, garbage in, garbage out, right? So if your data's a pile of junk, it ain't going to work too well. So there are some very, very, very practical, to use that term yet again, um, challenges for organizations. But hey, it's there, you can use it, and if you're prepared to, to uh, roll your sleeves up, you can start using it immediately. Luke, you know, one of the things that we heard, during, I, I loved the customer, the keynote this morning, customer examples, Rebecca and I and Dave were, were talking about that this morning, that it was a really dramatic, bold story told consistently through the voices of customers this morning on stage. I don't, we don't see that to that, I, I haven't, to that level of like dramatization, but I thought it was really impactful. But one of the things that I wrote down that I loved that Rob said is anything that AI can do, AI and automation can do better. Talk about, Mary talked about, you know, some people are still, you know, Ellen, to your point, is it good, is it bad, is it neutral, what is it? It obviously, it varies, it depends. The answer is D, all of the above. But give us, Luke, some perspective on AI and automation better together from UiPath's perspective and what, how that's going to impact your customers. Yeah, Lisa, so you know, I think, um, actually Mary said it well this morning around, you know, a if you think of AI as sort of like the, the brain and the automation as the muscle, these two things together really make AI, put AI to work in the enterprise. You know, I think a lot of the, you know, there's a lot, um, obviously a huge amount of excitement around Gen AI right now, and of course, you heard Graham talk about earlier today, specialized AI and, and generative AI. Um, but with, gener you know, with generative AI, where it's sort of uh, the use cases that you see today really have generative AI locked in this personal productivity uh, type of use cases where it's helping you, it can, do, you know, it can do things like write text, it can summarize text for you really well, it can analyze data, but it's sort of relegated to these personal productivity improvements. Um, and what really with, UiPath, what we're focused on is going beyond just personal productivity and actually making it productive for the enterprises. And you know, I think um, 
that's when you look at uh, the capabilities that that we bring to the table to help do that. First, you know, what is it? So, what does AI need to to actually you know make it work in the enterprise? First, there's context. So, you have to bring context to the, to the AI in terms of information, uh, so they can make the right decisions. You know how um, you know how valuable. You know, we heard from Walter Isaacson earlier on on the keynote stage as well, and. He's an amazing author. I love Walter Isaacson, but how many people would actually hire him and put him day one answering uh, customer inquiries and you know, writing back like responses to customers? Well, you probably wouldn't because he doesn't have the context. He um, knows a ton of information, but he doesn't have the context to know, you know, how do I respond to this customer in this type of to this type of request? Where do I get the information? Where do I enter information to re to be able to do what they're asking me to do? So. Uh, in UiPath, this, this context comes from our integration service and bringing that data in. And then the other elements are really around action. So being able to make, uh, give AI the capability to take action is really what UiPath is all about. So the, um, you know, it has to go beyond, to put AI uh, at work and make it productive in the enterprise, we have to do more than just make, allow it to make decisions with that context. You actually have to allow it to orchestrate the movement of information from system to system and enter it into, you know, do an invoice processing use case, enter that data into a system. So that's really what UiPath is focused on. And, you know, context and uh, providing context, enabling it to take action, yeah. that's where we amplify AI with automation. I want Walter Isaacson as my customer service rep. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think he might be a little pricing. <laughs> Luke, sticking with you, you mentioned the word integration and it was it reminded me of last year, August 2022, uh, Reinfer was acquired to enhance everyday customer conversations through automation. What's progress on the integration front? What are customers benefiting from one year later? Yeah, so we've been super thrilled to have Reinfer as part of UiPath and in April, we announced uh, the, the true integration of that into our platform as communications mining. So communications mining has unlocked a ton of new use cases for the platform. So around unstructured communications from customers, then being able to look at what are the communications that our, our customers are emailing us about, for example. Being able to understand that voice of the customer, but then actually going beyond understanding the voice of the customer, but actually being able to automate what, uh, based on those inquiries of, you know, can I cancel a policy? Can I upgrade my policy? Can I modify my insurance policy? Things like that. We can now automate those things inside the UiPath platform. Whereas before, you know, Reinfer could route, route emails to different people based on, on who, uh, you know, uh, was emailing in about what topic. But now we can actually take action and actually orchestrate the, the movement of the data and, and the automations downstream. And so uh, this combination with our orchestration and automation, but also our document understanding product has allowed us to expand our intelligent document processing suite to beyond just documents, uh, you know, typical documents you would think about, to also customer communications. So when that customer communication comes in and it has an attachment, we can now act on that attachment beyond just like what's the content in the email. And so, you know, it was uh, reflected, I think, well in the Everest report that came out earlier this year uh, around intelligent document processing, which ranked UiPath as the clear leader in that space. But one, one other, um, you know, one other uh, aspect to the integration of, of the communications mining into uh, the UiPath platform, this goes back to something Alan was just talking about, which is how do we, how do we make applied AI for more than just like the data scientists in an organization? And really, we've taken the active learning capability in communications mining, which allows a non-data scientist to create, uh, to create machine learning models without knowing any of the science behind it, and rapidly train these models to understand the specifics of their domain. And we've taken that, and you heard an announcement earlier today from Graham that we've introduced active learning and document understanding inside of uh, uh, inside of the UiPath platform as well. So not only have we taken the technology and integrated it very deeply, but we've also taken the learnings of how we can uh, you know, take these non-data scientists to train AI models and, and infuse that in other products inside of our suite. So we've benefited in multiple ways and uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing great adoption of the communications mining capabilities in our platform. Awesome. 
Alan, I'd like to, to ask you what your take is, what your perspective on UiPath's progress with IDP and communications mining and how, 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 we're, how they should be thinking about making sure that these IDP systems are fair and transparent and sort of what are the, the other considerations to take into account? There's, there's lots of considerations considerations to take into account. I think, you know, the one thing you could take a step back, so, so uh, intelligent document processing, it, it's relatively new. Um, document processing is really old. Uh, it's 30, 40 years old. Um, just wasn't very good before. Um, again, the last few years, advances with AI have meant that the accuracy level, say, for reading the text on a document in, in very simple terms, way more accurate than a human, right? So you know, that, that's a big threshold to get through. So that opens up a whole world, and the initial targets are basic, basic, basic business documents, invoices, um, bills of lading, um, statements, whatever, you know, the basic currency. But what things like Reinfo do is th they open up the possibilities more, right? So you have IDP for what we would call long form documents, so like very, very long contracts or whatever. That's, that's cool. But most communications are not big chunking formal contracts and leases. They're email messages, they're text messages, they're, hey Bob, did you see that? Shall we do something about it today, tomorrow, whatever? And so that, starts to open up those possibilities. And I don't think we've even really started to explore what those possibilities are yet. That's how early we are in the market. And that's exciting. So how are you tracking the progress of these initiatives? And, and, and what metrics are you using? And, and how, how are you determining? Really hard, that one. Um, because it's such a, it, you know, it's a very English phrase, but fighting with fog. <laughs> Every time you try and do something, it's changed and it's moved, right? So uh, there's those kind of things. I think there are metrics. I mean, there are metrics in the sort of formal world around bias and, 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 and whatever. And there's a whole world, um, sort of sub-world, if you like, um, evolving around AI ethics and, and benchmarking and, and uh, maturity and accuracy and everything. But outside of that, when you know, I, I use the term enterprise, but it could be a hospital, it could be a government department, but large organizations, right? When they're deciding whether they're going to use AI, well, that means they're going to have to invest, right? Because it, it's change, and change costs money. I think that's where there's, there's a lot of shift going on at the moment, because unfortunately, we see things like AI and, and RPA in the past, uh, and the current probably, as oh, they do the job of a human, so we need less people. That's not, that's not a good business metric. No. Uh, it's not very nice, for one <laughs> thing, right? But it's actually not very accurate. The, the reality is, you, you start these projects, oh, we're going to reduce headcount. No, no, no. They're, they're probably still going to be there at the end of the project. You just spent some money, you've still got the same people. It's not a good metric. Improving the accuracy, reducing errors, uh, improving customer experience. Um, you know, I, I won't say the name of the hotel, but I was trying to check something at reception this morning on the phone, right? Press one for this, press zero for the, oh my heavens, right? I mean, those kind of experiences. <laughs> we've are, all been there. We're, yeah. we've, we're there every day, right? Yep. Those are the kind of experiences when something isn't paid on time, when your appointment's been canceled, when um, your insurance claim is in limbo somewhere, right? These are the kind of things where you take correspondence, so reinfer, uh, you take correspondence, you take messages, you take those documents, and I'm not saying we're quite there today, but you can get to that point where you can get an answer to a question. You can get a response, and as a human being, hallelujah, right? Whether you're a citizen, you know, whether it's your insurance, like whatever it is, life stuff, that's great for you. But that's awesome for the organization too, because errors, angry clients, angry citizens, delays, inaccuracies, that's not fun for anyone, right? That's expensive, yeah, but it's also just pain right. that you're trying to get rid of. Yeah, right? yeah. 
Luke, what, I'm curious, this is a question I always grapple with because there's so much negativity in the news about AI and I think, you know, the, I, I feel like those of us that are in technology have, a, have a, some sort of sense of obligation to help on the awareness front to really start lauding all of the positives that are happening from it. Where, how do you, in customer conversations, what are some of the, the th things that you talk to them about in terms of, you know, not, to Alan's point, not reducing headcount, not eliminating jobs, but really enhancing, yeah. empowering. What, where are customers with that good, bad, neutral kind of perspective? Yeah, I think uh, this also ties into sort of Rebecca's question around the, how do you track the success of these sort of endeavors? And you're right, so uh, we, look at, we look at this as freeing up people's time to do more creative work, right? If I'm constantly an replying to the same email that's coming in to my help desk, that's a very boring task, right? We want to take away that drudgery and Unless free up. it's Walter Isaacson. Unless it's other. Walter Isaacson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course, I would love to get an email from him. <laughs> but um, you know, I think um, on one side of the coin there's how do we, re how do we free up people's time to do more creative work at work, right? And there's different ways to measure that. And that is, I really like the, at, like, you know, it sounds a little boring, but average handling time of a, an employee, right? So if you're reducing the, you, so when we have these AI processes, we bring humans in the loop to actually validate what the AI is doing oftentimes, especially more, the more important or critical the process, the more you want the humans to do validation. So you're not re always reducing the, the work to zero, you're actually just allowing them to do more, uh, but actually, you know, with, with less, on, less of the drudgery. They're just checking what the, the AI output, right? And so in that way, they're still handling the email, but their average handling time of, that, of those tasks goes way down. So that's one side of the coin. We can measure that a bunch of different ways, but I've seen average handling time of a, of a process be very, you know, of the human interaction in that be a, one way to measure how much time you're able to free up that create, for creativity. The other side is customer satisfaction. So if you're able to actually, uh, you know, process a customer request and get something done that they asked for, faster than you were before, where they might have been waiting days for some, somebody to, to do something that is working through a backlog of emails, you're going to get better uh, net promoter score out from your customers, right? Like you're going yeah. to get the customers saying, yeah, I love, the, I love working with them. I love the type of customer support I get from that company. So that's really the other side of the coin beyond just you know, saving, uh, freeing up people's time to, to be able to do more creative type of work. Um, so yeah, that's really like how, how we see that, that the ROI on the, those two different angles of it, yeah. Last question for both of you. What are your thoughts on the next evolution of IDP and, and comms mining? The next evolution. Yeah, so I think um, there's lots of different angles you can take on this. Uh, like more specific to IDP, the AI is getting better and better and better. There's gonna, I think we're gonna reach a point probably not in the too distant future where every document, intelligent document processing platform, it's sort of like the AI itself somewhat gets commoditized because it's, it's reached thresholds of how accurate it can be, right? It, it, becomes, there's, it becomes a point where there's diminishing returns on actually uh, that what the AI itself can do. And it becomes more about all the tooling and, and capability that surrounds the AI, like being, being able to bring a human in the loop to validate what the AI's output is, being able to monitor those success metrics of how well the process is performing uh, in your automation, like what types of, uh, you know, how much average handling time were you able to reduce uh, in that process? How, what's the customer satisfaction? Um, so, and we think UiPath is really well positioned there because we're not just an IDP vendor, we provide this capability around it that allows you to measure the success of the, of the process you're automating um, and be able to do things. We're working on things like to allow you to simulate uh, how your process is going to do before you even deploy it. So that tooling around it, human in the loop, simulation, being able to monitor and audit what's happening in your automation, those are the things that are really going to make the difference in the end because the AI itself uh, we'll reach a point of diminishing returns in the, what it's able to do. Alan, final yeah. word? I'll just take it from a different angle. I think, you know, at the moment, the, the traditional world of document pr processing has been about things like accounts receivable, accounts payable, really, really boring stuff, but very important stuff. 
I think now it's becoming democratized. I mean, I was um, a, a different thing last week, and there was um, somebody talking about uh, a real case study in South Carolina, I believe it was, where it was to do with foster children. And they moved from an 18-year-old access database and handwritten paper and forms to an electronic system. When you go out there, and as an analyst, I try very much to do that. I keep one foot in the sort of, if you like, the Silicon Valley world, another foot in the real world. You go into supply chain, you see the most amazing technology on cargo ships. Then you go into the office, and it's floor to ceiling with paperwork, right? So that's what I'm excited about, is there's a whole world of paper out there. We live when we're in the tech world, we live in a world where we seem to think everything happens digitally these days. That's not the case. It's just not like that out there. And the opportunities are almost endless. And again, that brings benefits to everybody if we can get that right. So that's Great note to end on. Alan and Luke, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. A good thank conversation. You. Thank I'm you. Rebecca Knight for Lisa Martin. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Forward Six. We'll be right back.